Hello all, welcome back. Today we'll see that how we can use the stable authentication for single sign-on. So for this training purpose, I would be using Dropbox as an application and Azure as an identity provider. I have already set up most of the things and uh, we'll use that one. So we'll give a walkthrough that how I, uh, all these steps can be completed. It's not hard. It just requires a little bit for uh, concentration because there are some during configuring there are the chances that uh, we may miss few spelling mistake and something so let's go ahead and watch carefully the very first thing is that you need to create a Dropbox business account so if you are using your uh, company based logged in with Dashman if you don't have a Dropbox business account search for the Dropbox business free trial ensure that you are using dropbox business free trial go back and here you will see that the url dropbox.com slash business try click here and create your account i have already created my account so let me go back and here so here if you see that this is the Dropbox account. Go back to the Dropbox. So this is my home. I am already logged into Dropbox. And I use the same uh, free trial versions. I am not going to create a new one because it is not advisable to use multiple ones. So I have already created and I am logged in using that one. So this is the one thing you need to create. Once you are done, you will see an option for the admin console okay one more thing to mention over here if you are not using the dropbox business then you won't be able to set up the sso single sign-on because single sign-on is supported only in the uh, business account so go back to the uh, admin menu go back to the admin console and once you are in the admin console go to the setting and here so you need to select the single sign-on just ignore the setting i have already done here i will go ahead and explain what are this thing means initially when you are going to use this one these all fields will be blank which uh, we need to copy from the azure i will show you that how step by step how it, i have completed this one the very first thing you need to change from here so here if you see that there are three options first one is off so if you are using uh, this optional as off you won't be able to implement the single sign-on second one is optional if you are using this optional sign-on method it means that you would be able to use the single sign-on of SAML and even the password as well so I would advise go ahead and use this optional one but if you are using the corporate account where most of the if you are setting up the corporate account go ahead and use the required only because in case of your business account or official account normally it is single sign on so if you are uh, doing this practically in live environment go ahead and use this uh, required one no more changes need to be done on this screen as of now go ahead and make the changes the same mark sure that you are making it save so i'm not saving this one i'm leaving this one as a optional so that in case some issue i can log in using the username and password so now you are done with the setup of the single sign-on next thing with that go back to the members and invite the team member so here if you see that i have created two account I would be using this second one on microsoft.com for single sign-on. This is because if you see that the user uh, the email id is bhargo pandey at the rate some number and on microsoft.com. So if you see that on microsoft.com it means these are the uh, corporate account or I would say it's not the personal account. So better to use single sign-on with this type of account only. If you have your personal account, go ahead and use your office account because your office account are already single sign-on enabled. 
the live.com is my personal account which I normally use for email ID and other activity as well so if you are setting this one your personal account you may face some uh, issue I will come back to that in one and we'll show you that how uh, what are the problem you are facing so better go ahead and add one more user invite a user with the email ID of the official email ID or corporate email ID once you set up the corporate email ID you will receive an email in your account so let me show you that how the email appear so see I'm logged into using my the corp uh, corporate account like so if you see that once user has been added you will receive something like invitation you just need to click on join and once you click on join if you are clicking here uh, it is already logged in so it won't uh, give me anything it will just directly logged in but if you are by in log into the first time or if you are accepting the invite it will ask for your username and password that's it only it won't ask anything it will just ask for user id and password because you are using single uh, adding a single sign on now you are done so your box account is set up and you have successfully added the user here you can see that I have two user one it's my logged in account for which I am the admin and I have added the second one so as of now as a first step no more setup is required on this one let's go back and make the changes to the your Azure account for that go back go to the Azure portal.azure.com and logged in with our account see here I'm logged in here using my personal account and I will add the another user as a secondary user go back and search for the enterprise application so if you're going to use any single signer or implement single signer you need to go for enterprise application click on the enterprise application go and create a new application here if you see that Azure already provided some of the pre-configured setting you can uh, using the AWS Google Cloud Oracle SAP and if you scroll down you will find some other applications as well so here if you see that there is the box and Dropbox business I'm not going to use the box so make sure that you are selecting the Dropbox business click on the Dropbox business make some name change the names if you want and go ahead and create once you created the application you would be able to see your application listed here click on this application go to the overview so once you have created the uh, a drop box it will redirect you to this page now you, you if you see that it's already providing a lot of step by step guide how we can configure the very first step is assign user and group here this is the first step where we are going to use the user who would be able to access your Dropbox using single sign-on go ahead click on assign user and group add user by default none selected so click on the none selected and from here you will be able to find out the list of user currently if you see that I am using the second one this is while uh, something like corporate account I just try to create a replica of this corporate account on microsoft.com this is already added so if I am going to add it will uh, give a error that user is already assigned see assignment failed for one user this is because the user is already added if you want to see go ahead and click and see no, not this one the ever one Just make a note of this ID. Okay, go back to home page. So now user is added. Go back to the overview. You are done with the assigning the user. Next step is to set up a single sign on. Go ahead and click on the set up single sign on. 
this is interesting and be uh, very carefully you have to look at here if you see that all the five step which was mentioned in this previous screen one two provision user a third one four conditional access and fifth cell service and then test is already listed here basic configuration attribute claims SAML certificate and other activity the very first thing when you are logged in all this information would be blank go ahead click on the edit the very first thing would be to give the identifier name so if you see that I have given the name Dropbox as identifier let me let me show you why I have given the Dropbox if I go back to the overview page you will see that name is Dropbox so this name and this name should match otherwise while logged in this may uh, the Azure readable through some error okay go back add the Dropbox in the reply URL just type https www.dropbox.com or whatsoever the your reply URL now if you see the sign in URL now you need again go back to the, your Dropbox so let me open the Dropbox go back to this setting once more and go back to the single sign on and here you will see then SSO sign in URL click on the copy link this will copy the single sign on URL so if you see this is single sign on URL go to your Azure and paste it here see Now we are going to configure our Dropbox for single sign-on. So all these steps need to be followed very carefully. Sign-in URL and done. These are the optional. So leave it. Once you are done, click on save and close. So you will see that first step is configure. You have configured your SAML. Next step is attribute and claims. So this is mostly used to give the uh, username, surname, email ID, user principal. If you want to read out and display these information somewhere on your Dropbox account, then you can use this one. Now again, go back to the next one. If you see here, this is automatically created some value. These are the SAML certificate value. It automatically generates the SAML certificate. What you need to do? go ahead click on the certificate and download so I have already downloaded this one so I will use this certificate to upload now what you need to go you need to again go back to the, your Dropbox scroll up and here you will see the x5.509 certificate click on the certificate select this one and upload click on save certificate is done so till now if you see that we have used these two only this certificate and copy link we have some more configuration need to be done these are the most uh, again more important things so let's see the how we can give, get this information see it has some value so you are done with the Dropbox let's go back to the, your Azure account go to the fourth step as I have already installed a secure sign-on browser that extension if you see that here it, uh, there is an extension this one it is not mandatory to install this one while training I have installed because this will give you the secure sign on otherwise my current session would be used 
to logged in and i won't be able to, uh, there there is no media that i can confirm that yet yes it is using single sign on maybe that i have already logged in so it it may pick that one so for that you can go ahead and download this extension and add to the browser but it is not mandatory next one is most important thing is the fifth step here you will see that configurations url now if you see that login url and logout url and if you go back to the your ss okay dropbox 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 okay and provider sign in url and anti provide sign out url so from here you need to copy this one click on copy go to the anti provider click on and paste it here similarly go to the logout select here and click so now you are done now go to the if you want to test click on the test this will open a windows here while testing this extension will be useful so for i have already installed the extension so it will automatically logged in using the extension as a secured so let me click on the test sign in see here otherwise as i am already logged into dropbox it won't ask okay so here it is asking click on this on microsoft.com because i'm going to use this one perfect here if you see that it is able to secure the login if you want to download this ml request if you want to download this ml responses you can download and here if you see that these are the identifier these are giving the format values and this is the token names what the token and their values fit token single sign on certificate these are the certificate value which we have already uploaded okay now close this it now it ensure that everything is working fine now let's go back and see how the single sign on work for that i'm going to go back to the dropbox i'm going to log out so i'm logged out and let me remove this screen from here okay so now here we are going to test how the single sign on work for that let's use the another account which was the on microsoft.com let's delete this one Oop. okay this one now if you see that once i'm clicking here and click on the contents here if dropbox is single sign on enable it will automatically redirect me to the Azure portal for login. Otherwise, what you can do, you can click on the login Dropbox credential and go, go back and type. This is why, because while setting the single sign on, I have selected the optional sign in uh, option is optional. If you have used the required, you won't be able to see this last options. Okay, click on the continue and see redirected to the my Azure account. I'm selecting this one because I'm going to log into this Dropbox using this account. And here we are done. Now, if you see that you are able to log into the Dropbox using SAML. So, this is all about the SAML authentication. For this training purpose, I have used some trial period for the Dropbox as a business and Azure as a simulation of corporate account. Thank you everyone, thanks for watching.